Hello everyone and welcome to this quick Blender tutorial where we're going to talk about a great way to give more personality to your little 3D animations, the animation curves. So suppose we have a scene like this one with some little vehicles doing a flash race side by side. As you can see, although the car and the truck start and finish at the exact same time, they don't move the same way. Basically, the car's movement is a bit more regular overall compared to the trucks. We could even have a completely linear movement which would look like this next to our first vehicle moves. Now, if we look at the timeline panel in Blender for both objects, we see that the car and the truck have the same exact keyframes. So, how come they move in a different way? The trick here is to play around with animation curves. Because although the timeline is the default panel Blender offers us for dealing with animation, it doesn't really show us all the subtle details of our object's animations. In particular, the timeline doesn't display the way Blender computes the intermediate values between our keyframes. This mechanic, called interpolation, is a key concept in 3D animation, since it's what allows us to only focus on the main steps of the animation and then leave it to the computer to figure out the in-betweens. And basically, depending on which path the computer draws in between your two keyframes, you'll get different movements, even though the start and end points remain completely fixed. Note that because it can ease the movement compared to the basic linear version, we also talk about easings when we refer to these specific ways of approaching the keyframe. Ok, so depending on the exact evolution we want for our object, we may need to use a different interpolation function. Typically here, I've given the car and the truck specific interpolators to get slightly different movements, even though the main steps, the start and the end, are the exact same. Alright, now it's time to see how we can do this in Blender step by step, on a simpler example. Let's say we have this sphere that just starts off with a size of 0 and eventually grows to a size of 2. We're going to see how to customize this movement and study a couple of techniques for editing animation curves. First of all, the easiest way to edit the curve of our sphere scale, especially if the movement we want to do is fairly common, is to use Blender's built-in interpolation modes and easings. We can access both options simply by selecting one of our keyframes, and then right-clicking in the timeline, or in the graph editor panel that we'll talk about in just a second, and you see that we get an interpolation mode and an easing type submenus. In short, the interpolation modes are a quick way to define the shape of the animation curve after the selected keyframe and up to the next one. So it sets the easing of both keyframes, for the first keyframe it's the out easing, and for the second keyframe it's the in easing. This makes it easy to do common effects, such as a Bezier curve, a linear progression, a quadratic or cubic easing, or even a bounce or an elastic dynamic effect. By the way, by default, Blender applies a Bezier interpolation mode to animations, which is why you always have this subtle acceleration-deceleration effect on your animations when you first start an animation. So if you want to make some continuous animation that can loop, you might want to change the mode to linear to avoid having the slowdown when your loop starts again. Ok, now if we're using an interpolation mode in the easing or dynamic effect section, then we'll be able to potentially override the behavior of the curve around a keyframe by also choosing an easing type. For example, if I choose a cubic interpolation, I can then play around with the easing type of my start keyframe to get the scrolling curve, the reverse effect that nearly plateaus at the end, or a mix of the two that looks more like the S shape, math lovers call it a sigmoid, that we had for our car and truck translations earlier. On the other hand, if we've picked an interpolation mode in the left column, meaning it's constant, linear or Bezier, the easing type won't have any effect on the graph. So keep that in mind when you're playing around with those options. Of course, these built-ins are still a bit limiting, and if we want to truly edit the curve, we might need to manually tweak it. This is possible thanks to another Blender panel called the Graph Editor. As you can see, this panel actually shows us the animation curve. 
So it displays the exact way that the animated values on our object evolve from the start to the end keyframe. For example, in this scene, if I select my sphere, I see that its X, Y and Z scales, represented by the overlapping red, green and blue curves, indeed grow from 0 to 2. Also, you'll notice that in this view, our keyframes are shown as little black dots. And because we're currently in Bezier mode, whenever we select a keyframe, we also see it has a little handle that allows us to easily modify the curve and adapt the animation to a liking. It's essential to remember that these handles will only appear if the interpolation mode is Bezier. All other interpolation modes will simply force the curve and make it impossible to see and move the handles. But anyway, here in Bezier mode, we can select our keyframes and then move around the handles to change the shape of our curve. We see that if we drag them back on the diagonal, we basically recreate a linear movement, but we can also create more extreme effects, such as a sudden increase at the beginning with a very slow end, or something that goes past the max value and then comes back to this end scale. As a last remark, if you select a keyframe with handles and right-click in the timeline or the graph editor, you'll also be able to change the handle type. I'll let you discover it by yourself, but in short, it's a way of linking or unlinking the handles before and after a keyframe to create smooth or sharp changes in your curve. And on that note, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this quick Blender tutorial and that you now have a better idea of how tweaking animation curves can help improve your 3D animations. If you did, feel free to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And of course, if you have other ideas of cool Blender tricks that you'd like to learn, tell me in the comments. As always, thanks for watching and take care.